welcome back to another episode of Deconstructing the Narrative. I am your host, and I am also a content creator with Stata Collective. My name is Erica Seha, and today I'm joined by Cody. How are you, Cody? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me, Erica. Yeah, no worries. Thank you for joining us. Perfect. Uh, so just to begin, we always just start by asking everybody to kind of give us a little rundown on what you do. So can you just kind of let everybody in on what it is that you do and what your craft is? Yeah, uh, I'm a motion graphics designer. Um, and what that entails is like any type of like animation promotion for like advertising or like music videos or like a lot of like social media assets, uh, things like that and of that nature. And uh yeah, it's just all about making the client happy. You know, the client gives us some, you know, uh, kind of like rubric or something that we follow. Mm -hmm. And then we kind of go along those lines. And then uh, it's my job to kind of ideate and innovate and like iterate upon those things. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And what would you say like your, I guess, specific style is within doing these graphics? Like what uh, primarily do you focus on in terms of stylistically, I guess? Um, I don't try to like have any particular style. I kind of just mm -hmm. do whatever the nature of the project needs, you know, because a lot of mm -hmm. times when these projects are brought to me, there's already a designer or an artist who has already made like a still image of that, right. you know, and so we have right. a style frame to go off of. And so a lot of times my job is to, you know, adhere the integrity mm -hmm. of, of that, um, that style and that look. But mm -hmm. when I do create something completely from scratch, mm -hmm. then what I do is I look at the audience, right? Mm -hmm. And I do substantial research on like who our audience is, the target market, our competitors, and like, and then I look for inspiration. So Cool. Awesome. Um, and then kind of, I guess, branching off of this, can we just dive a little deeper into what your background is, um, I guess, on your own as an artist, um, minus what you're working on right now. So kind of like where you came from and what, I guess, kind of led you into the creative path. Um, okay. Yeah, sure. So I'm <laughs> from Sacramento, uh, originally. Oh, sweet. Uh, yeah. Me too. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. What awesome. part of Sac? Uh, I'm from Roseville. So like right, right oh, okay. there, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm like, you? Elk Grove area, like Vintage Park area. Oh, awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> Sweet. Small world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I'm from Sacramento, and I was going to, like, community college out there. Um, this is after high school. But in high school, we I was part of this, like, animation program with okay. this great instructor. His name was Mr. Sullivan. And mm -hmm. it's actually, like, how I know Ryan, right, who, mm -hmm. who referred right. me. Um, mm -hmm. And there we just created lots of like short films and little projects mm -hmm. as a class, like basically doing like real world work mm -hmm. and having deadlines and having like a team and that atmosphere and everything just, I loved that so much. I wanted to be involved with that and I wanted to continue doing that. So I went to school for what I was going to do, like graphic design, like more mm -hmm. still stuff. Cause I was kind of burnt off the animation. Yeah. And then, uh, I said, so I went to community college out there and that, community college is a little difficult wasn't really getting mm -hmm. me anywhere so i was like okay mm -hmm. my buddy was like hey i'm gonna check out the school in san francisco and i'm like all right let's check it out <laughs> so i ended up going to the academy of art and san francisco is great oh amazing so much, yeah yeah it was great so so much like art and inspiration and so many other artists there you know mm -hmm. and uh just the city itself is just like it's it's a jet zone you know like it's just it's it's great to just walk around and just get inspired by like everyday things that you see you know and uh so did that for a while and then i was doing uh web design and new media so i was learning how to like make apps and websites mm -hmm. and then i had a teacher and that he was like oh uh animate stuff and then i'm like no but then <laughs> he's like, but then he's like look look how easy it is and he sh and uh like just as soon as as soon as he did that it was he was just such a great teacher and he was just so good at teaching it it was just like I already had this huge background and love for animation. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and the fact that he just made everything easier, it was just like, well, I already have all these principles down. Like I've learned all this stuff, you know? It's right. just implementing at this point. And he mm -hmm. just, it just felt like home, you know? It just felt like home. So I was just like, I'm just going to shoot for it. Sweet. That's so cool. Awesome. Yeah. And um, can we kind of dive a little bit in, I guess, to your experience with uh, art school? Because 
I feel like, you know, I went to art school as well, but I also feel like, you know, there's this like really weird thing with like art school and artists and like uh, there's half people who believe that it's like very useful. I think yeah, I'm more in yeah. that half. Then there's all the, also the other half where like, I don't need it. I can kind of self-teach, which I think there is a lot of resources out there to do so. But I think it's really interesting to talk to people who have gone to art school as well to kind of get your two cents on like your experience and kind of how that helped you kind of get where you are today. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I think it just really depends on like what you put into it, you know? And mm -hmm. if you have the discipline and you, you could do it yourself, then that's great. But if mm -hmm. you need, you know, like a boss or you need like a teacher to kind of, guide you through the process then you know you you get something out of that and right. my program specifically like all of our teachers were like very passionate the program was like very robust mm -hmm. there was a lot of opportunities there's a lot of technologies um and so i got i got i got a, i got a very edu good education out of it i believe um but yeah i mean you know artists could definitely do it on their own it's just like do they have the willpower do they have the discipline that's just kind of how I see it. Yeah, I think that definitely is what it comes down to too. Cause for me, I'm super like, uh, what is it called? Like I need structure personally. So like, I don't think I have like the willpower to just sit through and kind of teach myself things. I think you, like you said, you kind of have to be really like on top of like, Hey, I'm going to get this done today, get this one today. And I think for me to have that structure and like, no, I needed to get up to go to class and no, I need to, you know, get my homework done and do this, you know, really help me along. And I think, you know, it just depends on your mind, but yeah, I think it's really interesting to kind of chat with, you know, people who have gone to art school kind of how they view that process because I think it's, it's definitely very up in the air in the community and I think it you know it's it, like you said it is kind of what you get out of it and what you put into it is what you get out of it so it's really awesome cool um and then I kind of wanted to you know move over and chat with you a bit about uh like I guess you're just your view on the creative industry as a whole and kind of whatever role you think uh, artists play within this creative industry, especially with what you're doing. I feel like, you know, you're saying you're working with a lot of big companies and you're surrounded by a lot of creatives in your day-to-day. -day. So um, just based off of what you're doing, what role would you say that these artists play like in society as a whole? Yeah, so I saw that, that um, I saw that question. And I, I wanted to break that question down into two parts, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so of there's, course. Okay, great. Yeah, so, uh, so there's art and then there's design, you know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. definitely there's times where they cross paths. But I also think that in order to understand that world, you have to understand both, you know, mm -hmm. art, it, it asks questions, right? Mm -hmm. It provokes mm -hmm. thought. It's the mystery. It's that self-expression, right? Mm -hmm. because, right? Because art can be abstract and it doesn't have to ha need a result, you know, it doesn't right. need to please somebody it only really needs to please yourself 100%. But, then, but design design is very intentional you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's very detail oriented and it's very about answering a mm -hmm. question or solving a problem mm -hmm. and so what i'm doing currently in this world i believe is both you know mm -hmm. when you're working on like you know with with other talents like musicians and stuff like that you're, they see you as an artist. And so you're creating your own art and your own style and stuff. But also, you know, you are trying to, you know, make sure that your, your art style is effective in getting a message across and, and engaging with an audience, you know? Right. And so it's, de it's, it's just like a mix of both. Um, mm. So that's what I think, like, how to define it. And then in terms of like, how that comes full circle with like the culture, I think that an artist's job, besides, you know, doing the job and then getting paid for it, is uh -huh. like to just just to create from their heart, you know? And mm -hmm. and that comes from uh, just being inspired, you know, just about mm -hmm. everything in life and, and the artist around you, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just all about that community and going out there and creating work that will inspire other people to create even more amazing work that will come back to you and inspire you again, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And what does that process of like inspiration look like for you? Where do you typically tend to pull inspiration from? Um, it's just, it's like, uh, it's really anything. It could be anything in life or in the world. But I mean, I, I guess my lifestyle can tend mm -hmm. to be it because I like, I love video games. I love music. I play guitar, mm -hmm. I play video games. Um, and then I do like art and design. So I'm around a lot, 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 a lot, like a lot of tech, you know, mm -hmm. like I mm -hmm. like dabble and geek out in like some 3d mm -hmm. software or like, uh. I'm like 
coding and making this like interactive mirror thing, you know? And, uh, well, but then, uh, but then I'm like gaming and I'm like looking at like all these big streamers and like the stuff that they're putting out, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's really just like what I fill my life with and what in, what inspires me, you know, like I made that music video for mm -hmm. Neve Jolie and they were mm -hmm. like, Oh, we want it to be like eighties retro and like kind of like a video game and then i'm like oh well this is great because like right up your alley <laughs> yeah i'm just like okay we're gonna do like 3d mix it with like 2d let's like look into some like centipede like asteroid looking games or whatever you know and yeah but really like when it comes to any project for me i mean there's definitely like influences in my life that will drive the project forward but a hundred percent before I start any project, I just look everything up on the internet. Like I research mm -hmm. everything that I can find ab out about that topic to the, to the, in order to like tell that story better, you know? Mm -hmm. And would you say that that research process really just drives a lot of inspiration for you because you have the knowledge to kind of pull, I guess, pull from and put into the project? Yeah. Well, the, the thing about the creative process is it's like, there's no one way to do it. You know, you don't mm -hmm. just go like, you can't just do A, B, C, D, you know, like it, it um, kind of, a lot of times the way I think of it is like, you go through the creative process, right? You come up with an idea, you do research, and then you find out all the target marketed, all that kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. then you create something, right? And mm -hmm. then you iterate something. Mm -hmm. But then when, once you start creating, once you start executing upon an idea, new ideas sprout and it's mm -hmm. in, and instead of like this path that you would think is very linear it right. turns into this tree that right. even comes back and entangles into each other and um sometimes you just even just crumple up that piece of paper and just pull a new paper out you know totally like, and you can do a full circle you could you know you do a loop-de-loop -loop, mm -hmm. it's whatever it's it's very unpredictable but mm -hmm. you get you get there eventually because there's just that moment where you're just like, this is it. Right. Uh -huh. Right. Because uh -huh. it, 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 it's just like my teacher said, like, there's ideas that are like bronze. There's ideas that are gold and there's ideas that are diamonds. You just mm -hmm. got to keep digging mm -hmm. until you find the diamond. <laughs> and, that, <laughs> of the idea. and that and that's what that's what this industry is all about. It's all about iterating. It's all about. Mm -hmm having an idea. Okay. That was great. Let's try that. That didn't work. Let's do this other idea or let's just, let's just establish upon that. Let's just iterate upon that. Let's just retry that again and see how it works. Right. Mm -hmm. And then eventually down the line, you just, you just hit home. Yeah. A hundred percent. I love that. And I think that, you know, it is, it is a process <clears throat> that's different for everybody. And I think that the fact that you kind of understood that it kind of, you know, isn't so A, B, C, D every time, you know, everybody works different, everybody has different minds. And, you know, we all take different paths to get to like an end goal. And I think that it's really interesting to kind of chat and understand, you know, how different people take that approach, you know, because for some people, um, I am personally very like, I need to write everything down, I need to get everything like all in a line for me to figure it out. But some people can kind of just go off and like, just their mind is just everywhere and it ends up coming together too. You know what I mean? So I think it's just different on the person. It's different on, um, I guess the resources you have available to you. It's just very dependent on a lot of things. And, um, yeah, I think that if, you know, artists understanding that it's not so one after the other, like step-by-step -step type of situation is really important, you know? So that's really, really interesting. Yeah. And I think that, you know, I think you probably got that a lot from like your background in school as well. You know, they kind of like let you off with an, you know, with an end goal and it's just like, how do you get there? And you kind of notice or with your peers around you, especially in art school, like the different approaches everybody takes. It's very interesting <laughs> to sit around and yeah. just kind of see like, you know, how different well, everybody works. So that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I definitely think that there's like parallels at the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. Like in the structure, because it's like, okay, make a timeline, make a deadline, uh, mm -hmm. do sketches, do storyboards, right? Exactly. And exactly. Um, research your market, your audience, start building a study, uh, you know, um, a case guide where you're like, you mm -hmm. know, documenting everything. But then once you hit that creation point, that execution mm -hmm. point, once you actually start seeing your ideas unfold in front of you, mm -hmm. everyone in goes air. in different directions, mm -hmm. everyone. Mm -hmm. And that, mm -hmm. that was the great thing about like, 
being in school around so many mm-hmm. artists. You just got to see kind of how they thought, you know? Exactly. And yeah. It's just like people, everyone thinks differently. Like mm-hmm. if you put a bunch of students across, none of them are going to have the same project. Yes. You know? uh-huh. Unless they just, they're just lazy and they just Googled something and then they both chose the first thing they saw. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's cool that it's cool in that sense too to kind of be able to see, I guess, the way other people work. Cause I, I think that's a really big part of the pro, like being able to see an artist's process is a really big part of understanding like the final piece. You know what I mean? Cause a lot of the time, like your, your mind space and your, um, like everything that is happening to you in that moment can kind of translate throughout that process and into the final product. So to be able to like watch other people kind of work and, just makes you understand the narrative better, I think, at the end. So um, that's kind of why, you know, we really stress doing this and kind of chatting with artists to kind of understand that process so we can more understand like their final, you know, projects and, you know, pieces. Cause you know, we go on social media and I can like look you up easily, I'm sure, and find your art. But like, I don't know what that means unless I'm able to like talk with you and like hear, hey, this is what that's going on. You know, of course, art is subjective and we can put our own story to things, which is also, I guess, a beautiful, really beautiful part of the art industry. But I think being able to kind of connect with the artists and understand their process and you know what goes behind goes on behind the scenes um, is also really important as well. So perfect. Um, and then um, I kind of want to chat with you about because I know you you know mentioned you work on a lot of big big projects and Ryan has mentioned to me that you worked on a lot of big projects. So kind of want to delve a little bit deeper into that and see what that process is like um, just for like inspiration in terms of like you know smaller artists who are planning on kind of going that direction. Um, how that I guess process has been for you and what helps and what doesn't. Sure. Yeah. Um, awesome. Oh, was that was that the question? Yeah. So just do I just go like, into it now? Just okay. go into it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'll just like talk about like one project and then we'll yeah. just go from there. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the first project that I'll bring up is the project that we did with Nevaeh Choli with like the video game theme. Uh, mm-hmm. um, so that, you know, client comes to us, they have a problem. They're like, we need the video. We need it mm-hmm. like now you know and then it's like okay well what do you guys have and then they're like well we have this idea of you know our musician they really like this music video that they saw and they want to do something of this line and uh, it's great because you know they really like um video games as well you know Mm -hmm. and so a lot of times it's like the musician and like some of their interest and some of their passions and they have Mm -hmm. like a little bit of a vision and a little bit of a say of what they want. And then it's like, okay, well, let's, let's do that. That sounds great. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you always, you always say like, you always say yes. You always, you always just agree. Yeah. You're always just like, okay, <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. And if it doesn't work out, we'll figure something out. Um, and so we did that. Uh, they wanted to do this like retro look and um, I was like, okay, yeah, I'm down. So there's actually, some other musician that I was heavily inspired by when creating mm-hmm. this, and that's uh, mm-hmm. Porter Robinson. I don't know if oh, you've ever I love heard him. of him. Yes. Yeah, so uh-huh. <laughs> he, when he makes his music, he mm-hmm. uses all old school video game sounds. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that's why it has that nostalgia. And I think uh-huh. that's so beautiful. But he yeah. had some great uh, music videos to go along with it as well. Mm-hmm. That had and a his very, visuals. Yeah. His but shows it, are amazing. But it was very modern as well, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And that was one of the key words that they said to us you know like if if Mm. i could build a word list we have retro and modern in the same space it's just Uh like well how do you even do that right Uh (laughs) and and the way that you do that is you just you just you have to go into the future of what art is and that's like Mm -hmm. 3d you know Mm -hmm. like abstract 3d stuff that that has information to it but it's not really explained you know what I mean it's a little abstract so Mm -hmm. it's like okay well in the Porter Robinson music video they had these cool little landscapes in there Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you're doing what this like tunnel you're like going through like this looped tunnel and I'm Mm -hmm. like let's iterate on that let's do Mm -hmm. a looped tunnel in this like retro sci-fi like world you know Mm -hmm. and so Mm -hmm. I looked into other things that other people have done to create like an, a tunnel, like an infinite loop for like VJing, right? Like, mm-hmm. like, like doing like music visuals mm-hmm. and um, Cinema 4D. I'm like, okay, great. I know that tool. And then I found some tutorials on like kind of where to go with that. And then I built out the whole landscape space that is like moving, but it's also like looping. 
And then I wanted to give it like that retro look VHS. So I use like some VHS um, effect uh, filters to kind of mm-hmm. give it that scratchy, glitchy look. Mm-hmm. And then also um, to put um, like chromatic aberration. Sorry, it's a very specific thing. It's basically you have colors, right? Everything uh-huh. is like colors, like, you know, like we know the spectrum we learned this like in school. Right. Um, but in terms of like old school visuals, everything mm-hmm. is RGB. Right. And, uh, um, or CMYK, it, it depends. Uh, but basically what happens in like those old TVs and stuff is those colors, they split mm-hmm. from each other. So like mm-hmm. RGB all together creates a black line, right? right. What mm-hmm. happens when they all split? It mm-hmm. becomes like a cyan line or a cyan line and a, and a magenta line. And then mm-hmm. you also have the black line. And so you have this like effect. And so it's like 3D looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Um, but it's like a natural thing that just happens uh-huh. in like old technology. So when you uh-huh. throw that on to this, this like modern 3D futuristic scene that we're building out, that's uh-huh. what gives it that retro feel. Mm-hmm. And um, so I think it worked out really well. And then um, in terms of having the interaction of like the the lyrics, because it was a lyric video, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to make it feel like you're playing a game. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, what are some games where you're, it's like a blaster game, you know? Like, uh-huh. what games? and then I was looking at, uh, uh, I can't even remember what it's called. It, it's the, it's, it's the one where you defend the bases. Mm-hmm. Um, you're like these little bases and you're shooting uh, invaders, invaders, of course. Yeah, yeah. So like invaders and like when you shoot that that particle, how does it, or when you shoot that monster, how was that old school like look and feel? Like how did that, how did that explode, you know? And I right. looked at that and then I used that as inspiration. And then I would, and then I, made a little gun which was like a lipstick because it was like girl themed uh-huh. and, then I, and then you shoot the word and then it oh, does so the little eight bit pixel explosion uh-huh. and then yeah i was just like this is this is awesome and then i went a, i went a little bit further into detail to really sell it i created some little like score system that's like uh-huh. happening and it and it shows that like you're getting like extra points or whatever and then oh, i created sweet. a little a little life bar and stuff like like a ui a little hud just uh-huh. to really just to add that extra element that really sells it like you're mm-hmm. like it looks like an actual video game right so, yeah sweet that's awesome well wow, that's such a process and i feel like you kind of just were going like with what was happening so you would like figure one thing out and then you're like oh my gosh now i gotta do this and this and it just all came together which is so cool i can tell just from the way that you're talking <laughs> so that's awesome <laughs> that's so cool i have to go check that out that's amazing awesome Um, and then, um, I guess kind of, you know, um, going based off of your process, um, I kind of wanted to talk with you about, I guess, um, any inspiration, like people that you kind of pull from. So like, do you have any, um, specific artists or something that you follow, I guess, and you mentioned Porter Robinson and his, you know, his visuals, but do you have any other, I guess, like specific, like, uh, motion artists that you kind of look to for inspiration, um, that kind of help you when you're creating as well? Um, like one specific artist in or that like project? A few. Or like a few in general that just like inspire, like, I guess the way that you, what you create and when you create it. Um, so like, I guess, yeah, for that project specifically, or I guess any other project <clears throat> that you ever work on, just like a specific artist that you just really like love and look up to and that kind of, you know, their style has kind of, you know, translated I really, into your own. I mean, I would really say that that one was more heavy in the Porter Robinson, mm-hmm. you know, like I definitely... The, the look and the feel of, of his visuals and his music, I, re- I think I was really heavily influenced by that. So I think for the most part that, but I mean, definitely the, the artist that I looked up to find the tutorials on, on how to create those like 3D mm-hmm. looped landscapes. I mean, I definitely mm-hmm. was inspired by what he was doing as well, you know, mm-hmm. um, I don't, I don't know his name. I can look him up real quick if you want me to. No, you're totally fine. I, I think I was just talking more in general about like, I guess, like maybe not for that specific project, just like in general, like any artists that you've kind of looked up to throughout your career. That oh. have, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <Okay. laughs> yeah. yeah. 
yeah um, so just like any favorites i guess <laughs> any favorite yeah. like, motion designers um i really like what uh like what digital obscura does mm-hmm. and they create like these big immersive experiences and everything has like some sort of interaction to it you know mm-hmm. um and that's kind of what i've done in my path is i've done a lot of stuff that's like you know, like you wave your hand in front of a TV screen and then mm-hmm. it's like registering that your hand is moving. So there's like mm-hmm. not, not only these motion elements that are happening, but also like this interactive helmet element where you feel like you have some sort of control to that, you know? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. So I kind of bring that to life in a lot of my projects. Um, and I think that's just because of the peers that I was surrounded in um, school. I had some very in- intelligent friends who are doing mm-hmm. some really high tech stuff with like Xbox connects and like 3D mm-hmm. cameras and 360 cameras and virtual reality and like all that kind of stuff. And so I think that 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 realm and that world of like design and what design is, you know, becoming mm-hmm. is definitely like influential to me because I want to be at the excellent echelon of um that world as well you know I want to Mm -hmm. stay on top of those things but yeah I mean specifically like John Luca Rumi Mm -hmm. like those were some of my um, colleagues and they heavily inspired me in some of the things that I do Uh, Mm -hmm. my teacher um, Sebastian Colin Mm -hmm. uh, he definitely inspired me as well and um, a lot of musicians as well Mm -hmm. I listen to a lot of music um, Mm -hmm. Some of my favorite artists are probably like Arctic Monkeys. Okay. Mm-hmm. And Mac, and Mac Miller, I'd probably uh-huh. say. Um, and just many more. Tame Impala is pretty great too. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're amazing. <laughs> awesome. Cool. And then um, I guess just kind of starting to move over into, I guess, um, we want to kind of break down, um, especially you. I feel like you have so much experience working with, you know, clients and stuff like that. So what is some advice that you've kind of, you know, I guess like something that you wish, like that you were asking yourself back then that you've kind of, that you kind of now know now, something you wish you knew when you were okay. kind of newer and starting out, like advice, sure. I guess, for smaller this artists. Is, this is a great question. This is uh-huh. a great question. Um, <laughs> So when you're freelancing, a lot of times you're going to have clients that are very specific to what they want. Mm -hmm. And when you're an artist, you tend to, you know, be a little biased, right? You kind of have an idea of what you want. You know what will work because you've done it so many times before, you Mm -hmm. know? So when an Mm -hmm. idea is brought to you and you're like, "Mm, okay, you know? Uh-huh. How how do you uh you know approach that in a like a very nice and sincere way you know uh-huh. mm-hmm. and a lot of the times you just you just do what they want you just do exactly what they want and then you have a plan on the side and you do that plan as well mm-hmm. so you do exactly what they want and then you do your plan because you know your plan's gonna work right and then, and then you show them what they want and then you Mm -hmm. tell them okay I did this Mm -hmm. but I don't think that it's effective for these reasons Mm -hmm. now now I've done this let me show you what I have in mind right right Uh and it's it's a very finicky thing you know to do but a lot of times when you're the designer when you're the artist you know you're being hired because they don't know how how to do that job you know Mm -hmm. and at the end of the day sure you want to make your client happy but you also want to make sure that your client is successful right right so it's kind of that like always what comes first right so kind of that line of like trying to like do what you need to do without like disrespecting anybody and I think that that approach I think is really interesting with like you're doing that without having said anything in the beginning and just like knowing in your head, like, okay, like this is probably not going to work. Let me, you know, to kind of just, you know, avoid that conflict in the beginning, kind of just do it and then bring it to them. And oftentimes I'm sure that you come up, you know, using your idea instead. (laughs) So that's really cool. Well, I will communicate to them like, Hey, I'm going to do this idea, but there's another idea that I think is really going to work and Mm -hmm. I'll present that to you with this idea. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times that, yeah, but a lot of times that other idea is just an iteration 
of the original idea anyways mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. uh most of the time they don't feel like they've been cheated or whatever like mm -hmm. they still feel like their vision is like being moved forth um but yeah sometimes you just kind of got to try to steer the wheel but you don't want to crash the ship you know mm -hmm. you can't you mm -hmm. have to you got to go along with the flow you got to go with the flow you don't want to like rub 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 against you know whatever too hard. right like you you really got to be careful when it comes to that and that's the mm -hmm. most difficult thing when working with clients i'm trying to be like as transparent as possible like mm -hmm. that definitely is um the hardest thing when it comes to freelancing is like some clients are very easy to work with and some mm -hmm. clients are very difficult to work with and you just mm -hmm. have to know how to be very flexible and agile and be ready to be thrown things that you're not ready to be thrown things and then also mm -hmm. like be ready to have like a backup plan you know because you know that they might throw this thing at you and then you're like mm -hmm. oh you know it's very um it's very like a push and pull kind of thing um mm -hmm. but yeah that that's that's my advice to myself my, mm -hmm. my younger self. If younger I, self. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. No, I think that's really important too, especially for um, just, you know, creatives who have in the mind of kind of working with clients, you know, some, some creatives like to work on their own and they kind of want to do their own path. But I think there's this uh, really big, you know, area where there's a lot of creatives who do want to work with bigger companies and stuff. And I think that's very intimidating to think about being thrown into those situations and not know how to handle them. And I think if you don't have that prior, you know, you know, ability to like approach people and know how to like approach a situation like that, um, things can go awry. So I think that that's really good advice, uh, just in the sense of how to work, I guess, in the business aspect of, you know, selling yourself too, because especially when you're freelancing, that's so important is, you know, kind of customer interaction and customer client interaction. And I think that's, um, that's awesome that you've kind of, you know, figured that out along the way. Yeah. Can, can I add something? Yeah, of course. Kind of going back on what you said, Erica, mm -hmm. like, being very like planning and being very like detail oriented mm -hmm. and like having structure. Mm -hmm. I think those things are very important when it comes mm -hmm. to expressing your ideas. Right? right. Because a lot of times you're like, Hey, your idea is great, but let me express my idea. And mm -hmm. the reason why that works is because you have all that as a background, you know, you mm -hmm. have that structure and um, that really comes with like communicating ideas. And so mm -hmm. one of the biggest things that I am an advocate of when it comes to like communicating ideas is like communication. So like me and you right now having like mm -hmm. a video conference call, this mm -hmm. is, this is, this is amazing. This is the mm -hmm. best form of communication you can have. So mm -hmm. the higher level of communication you can have when presenting your ideas, the better. So um, most of the time when it comes to like presenting like a final product, I, I never just want to just kind of hand it off to somebody unless mm -hmm. you know there's third parties you know there's this there's this client and they're an agent to this and then they have like a mm -hmm. higher person there right then you mm -hmm. kind of have to shoot down the ladder but if you're just doing it for like one individual person you definitely want to have that that um that moment where you can kind of explain all your ideas and visuals and have like a very well presented deck and mm -hmm. um you know some visuals for them to go off because your um your your ideas and your visuals will just look that much more thought out and look mm -hmm. that much more professional and mm -hmm. it, it will just sell them more you know mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. there's definitely been times where i'm like hey here's some logos pick which one you think over email right <clears throat> and they're not sold on anything and then they just like leave they just like mm -hmm. they just cancel they're just like i don't i don't want to I'm going to find another artist mm -hmm. and that's because, you know, there, it is a process, right. And like the first round of something is never going to be what the final round is going to look like. Right. But uh -huh. it's like, let's get some ideas out there. Let's start showing some ideas so we can get feedback and have a conversation so that kind we can funnel it down where uh -huh. we want to go. Uh -huh. um, and then there's been times where I do a well-presented deck and maybe the ideas aren't very strong, but we have some mm -hmm. ideas and there's something there, right? Mm -hmm. But but because you have that communication, it's like, these aren't the final product, right? Mm -hmm. But these are the ideas. Let's talk about them. Let's brainstorm together. 
right meet so we can kind of meet on the same the page client. Mm -hmm. so yes yeah, so we could be on the same page and that's right that's the that that little piece of advice is is uh is great and i actually um i do have an artist that uh that that i learned that from um i'll have to look him up on youtube um but i could def i would definitely like to to shout out his uh yeah definitely youtube channel real quick um uh what is his name uh can i find it it should be like one of the oh yes here uh the future academy i'm not sure who the the main guy is for that but the future mm -hmm. academy future is spelt like the the font future which mm -hmm. is f-u-t-u-r mm -hmm. he has a lot of great videos um he is very helpful he is very community oriented and uh -huh. uh, i learned a lot of the things that i like execute on and the thing and how mm -hmm. i deal with clients from mm -hmm. watching his channel so cool yeah. i'm gonna link that in the bottom for everybody to check out too because i think that's so important to kind of you know know how to how to handle those <laughs> situations um especially just just in this industry um especially now it's so hard to get opportunities in general so when you kind of do get those opportunities i think it's really important to know how to navigate through working with people and working with clients and especially when you have uh, differing opinions and differing you know views of what the final product should look like. I think it's really important to know how to kind of, you know, communicate that and kind of work towards, you know, being on the same page. So I'm definitely going to link that in the bottom for everybody who's listening because I think that's super important. And I think that everybody needs to kind of do research on that, um, me included, <laughs> because that, <laughs> I mean, that process is, is, is difficult. It's difficult, especially for a lot of artists. You know, I know a lot of my friends are very timid when it comes to, to talking to people and working with people. And, you know, there's a certain extent where obviously the customer is always right, but also there's a certain extent to where, you know, you want to stick with your vision and make sure that you're always, you know, kind of aligning with what you believe in as an artist as well. So I think kind of being able to kind of meet in the middle of those two things is, is difficult. And so um, that's a really awesome resource. I appreciate that. Perfect. Um, and then I guess just in general, what is some advice uh, you would give to a, just a younger artist in any field, um, you know, aside from just working with clients and stuff, but more towards just like how to navigate through like the creative community as it is today, especially with you know, like I mentioned social media and stuff, I feel like it's very intimidating entering into it as a younger person and kind of how to, you know, kind of success successfully start and get your name out there. Um, what is some advice that you've kind of encountered in that end of things? If there's one thing that I could do different, it's to create every single day. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. what you're creating, whether it's art, music, design, or even just sketching, right? Mm -hmm. just just make something every single day because mm -hmm. every time you touch that pad every time you touch that mouse and keyboard every time you touch that software mm -hmm. you're gonna go in better you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. practice practice makes perfect and that mm -hmm. really what you need to do especially if you're young just give yourself little tasks little goals um mm -hmm. keep keep driving forward keep staying inspired like look that's another thing yeah look at inspiration look at other mm -hmm. people's art like because there's so many times where i'm like not in like a creative space you know i'm like on a hiatus yeah. i'm like i'm like on a hiatus mm -hmm. it happens to mm -hmm. people right like you're just of course don't yeah, have that any creative ideas. block time mm -hmm. and then you just listen to a bunch of music or you like you get on dribble and you just look up some stuff and then or maybe you're just scrolling through tiktok whatever mm -hmm. right and then you see something and then you're like I want to do something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I have an idea to do that, right? And that's part of what we were talking about with like the culture of like other artists inspiring other artists. Like there is so many creators out there, so much talent, so much art out there that like you need to digest it. Like you need to mm -hmm. just look at it all, find it all. And then when you have that little idea, just do it, just create it, regardless of mm -hmm. how well executed it was it doesn't matter make it move on try something else but as long as you're just like constantly moving forward and constantly creating work your work is just going to get better more eyes will see it you'll get recognition you just need mm -hmm. to keep working towards your goals 
Mm -hmm. It's that consistency. And I think, you know, so if, if the more you do something, the better, like you said, you're going to yeah. be at it. So, you know, the better you get at it, obviously the more eyes are going to be on it. So I think it's all just like a, it's hard, I think, because people see, you'll see so much with social media that people will just blow up in a day. So there's this expectation level of like, oh, if that doesn't happen to me, like I'm a loser and I did nothing, but, you know, but, but who are the people that blow up in that day, mm -hmm, you know? exactly. are, they, are they the people that are like getting lucky or are mm -hmm. they the people that are putting in the work? Exactly. You know, and that a lot of times factor is hard. to understand, A lot of times. You know? Yeah. But a lot of times the people that are, are blowing up in that single day have been doing it for a while. That's true, too. And then yeah. and then because they blow up, people just think that they just started doing this. Mm -hmm. But in mm -hmm. reality, they've been doing it for a long yeah. time. You know, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. let's take an example of one of the artists that I mentioned today, Mac Miller. Right. Mm -hmm. rest, rest in peace to him mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. before he blew up he had so much music created yeah mm -hmm. so much music mm -hmm. that guy was a workhorse he had albums mm -hmm. on albums already mm -hmm. created and so many artists do have that and then they get scared to put it out or whatever mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter just just put it out there just, just put make it out it there and put it mm -hmm. out there because yes. you're only doing it for yourself you're not doing it for other people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so who cares what the response is at some point someone's yeah gonna you'll get a response it. It'll happen. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't, then just keep working at it because exactly. you're doing what makes you happy, right? You're doing mm -hmm. what you like to do. Mm -hmm. I think that's so important. Yeah. And I think that consistency aspect is really, is really just so important for people to understand. And <laughs> yeah, like you're saying like this, I, you know, like you do, you do see someone blow up and you're like, oh shit, like they just started yesterday and now they're here they are. But it's like, no, like they probably do have like, uh, you know, a whole pile of work they've been working on. And I think it just takes time and um, you know, we, I think again, just the social media thing, it's like, you see what they put out, but you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. And oftentimes there's so much that's behind the scenes. And so just kind of, you know, keeping that consistent, I think, you know, putting stuff out there as well is, is really important. Cause, um, you know, I think art kind of follows throughout, it follows the story of you throughout your life. And it's constantly going to be changing because your life is constantly changing. And so, you know, someday right. you're going to yeah. put out maybe one, one day I'm going through something and I put it out and no one connects with it. But then the next day I'm going through something else and I put that out and all of a sudden someone's going to connect with that, you know? So I think that that's, totally. yeah, it's just important to kind of show that flow and eventually someone's going to catch on. So that's awesome. Well, perfect. Cody, thank you so much. It's been so much fun talking to you and I think you have a really good <laughs> head on your shoulders and I think it's going to be thank really you. useful for people to listen to you and kind of understand, you know, more of the business aspect of stuff. I haven't really gotten to chat much with um, any of my other guests about that. It's been a lot more about the creative process. So I think you have a really good, you know, gauge of how to deal with like business situations related in the creative industry, which I think is so important, especially in LA. Um, Trying to work as a creative and being able to navigate that yeah. is, is, is imperative. I, <laughs> so I've, I also worked for um, some like kind of major companies. Like I worked at Apple for a mm -hmm. bit and I did, um, I worked on some projects there. And so like, it's amazing. Um, I know kind of what that entails as well. You know, when you're like freelancing, working for like these big mm -hmm. corporate companies and uh, in terms of like creating your own type of work, they're, they, they tend to be stepping stones, you know, they tend mm -hmm. to be stepping stones. And I, I think they know that. And that's why a lot of their like, um, roles are like freelance or like temporary. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but they're great companies, you know, they, yeah. they treat you, they treat you well. They definitely mm -hmm. take care of you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just learning how to navigate. I guess the, the interactions that you have within those are super important. So um, the fact that you've nailed that is amazing. And um, I hope that everybody listening kind of takes something from that and, you know, incorporate into their own little venture. Um, I know I definitely will. <laughs> and I'm going to go look up that, <laughs> those tutorials and stuff that you told me about, because I think that's so important to watch as well. And we'll share that with our community and get that out there. So thank you yeah. so much. Um, do you have any form of contact where anybody listening or watching can reach you out if they have any questions or just want to connect with you about your art? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you awesome. can uh, check out my, my portfolio. It's uh, Cody Malik dot com there's a contact uh at the very bottom there but my email is uh, me at cody malik dot com very easy um and then also like i stream daily um and if you want to hop in to my stream i stream on twitch and that's at uh that's a different name but uh my <laughs> alias is mally can't carry and M mally is spelled m-a-l-i-c-a-n-t and then carry yeah pretty awesome pretty easy but um, yeah, so I do that a lot. And if you have any design questions, I would love to answer them. Um, I'm also creating content on TikTok. 
um, at, at, at the same alias. And I've been making some videos on how to, you know, uh, make animating easier for people who might want to be making so little projects cool. for themselves. So yeah, yeah, TikTok's been a great tool. Uh, I just had an interview earlier today too, and you guys are the first two that I've kind of mentioned TikTok, which I was really surprised about because I think it's such an amazing tool to kind of put out there, like, you know, like little like excerpts of kind of how to navigate through things. And I think there's a really big uh, community of artists on there, which I think it's so cool and designers, uh, you know, yeah. like on there and they kind of release like this behind the scenes and tutorial type stuff, which I think is so helpful. It's helped, I've found so many things that have helped me so much. So um, definitely go check him out if you're watching this. Um, that's, I'm sure that's really helpful as well. So thank you again, Cody. And thank you everybody for watching. And if you have any creative friends or if you are a creative who would like to be interviewed as well, um, there's an application link that you can submit on through our Instagram on Sada Collective. You can also email me, email me directly, excuse me, at erica at sadacollective.com. And uh, thank you again, Cody, for sharing your story. And thank you everybody for watching. And I really look forward to the next episode. So I'll talk to you guys all soon.